I think it was in the 1970s that I first discovered the New American Standard Bible. I, I've enjoyed it ever since, really. I, I appreciate its cross-references. I appreciate its... Uh, whenever it quotes the Old Testament in the New, it puts it in capital, so Old Testament quotes stand out. Uh, I like its margin uh, references, further detail on the text. I like the fact that if they do add an English word for a better English flow, uh, they put that in italics so you know it's not in the original Greek or Hebrew. I really feel kind of safe with it and I've enjoyed it. Uh, sadly, my, my uh, current one, I've had it for a long time. It's uh, got to this stage now, but I'm struggling on with it. Uh, but I do, I say that by way of introduction that I never forget the day when I read the New International Version in Second Peter chapter 1, where it uses this wonderful translation of a verse that's kind of a little bit lost in the NASB. In the NIV it says this, He has given us all things that we need for life and godliness. Everything we need for life and godliness. He has given us everything we need. And I, I, I remember I was sitting at my desk and I thought, I can't believe what a wonderful verse. I, I was stunned by it. I remember I actually got up in my study. I walked around the study. I remember I walked down the road, around the block. He has given us everything we need for life and for godliness. Imagine having everything you need for life. He's given us everything we need for life and not only life, but for godliness. Everything we need for life and for godliness. And then it says, through the great and precious promises. That's how we do it. We escape, it says, the corruption that's in the world, that downward drag that's all around us. And we become partakers of the divine nature. I mean, that opening passage in Second Peter is absolutely stunning and wonderful. So this is a, a word of terrific freedom, of joy and delight, uh, and it's through the precious promises. Okay, beloved, we believe the promises. It's not let go and let God. It's not legalistically uh, get under rules and regulations. It's believing the promises, taking them to yourself. That when it says that I've been crucified with Christ, when it says I've been raised with Christ, when it says he that has died is freed from sin, we must take the promises, believe the promises, trust God in his faithfulness, apply the it's through the promises that we escape the corruption, the downward drag. We become partakers of the divine nature. Jesus came down to a partake of our human nature. He was made like his brothers in every respect. But when he rose from the dead, he said, go tell my brothers. We become part of his divine nature. It's absolutely magnificent. So let's realize the wonder of what God has granted to us. Everything we need, not only for life, but for godliness. Come on, let's arise and shine and bring glory to God.